The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, A Best Practice Approach to Telco Ecosystem Digital Transformation. My name is Mohammed Shah, and I'm the Director of Marketing for Memberships at TM Forum. Today's webinar will be hosted by Robert Walker. Robert is the Senior Director for Strategic Programs here at the Forum. Robert, the floor is yours. Thanks, Mohammed, and uh, welcome everyone to the webinar. Uh, as Mo says, my name is Robert Walker. I've got responsibility for our digital maturity model and related activities here at the Forum. Uh, so I'm joined today by uh, Bjorn Menden. Bjorn is a, a managing partner uh, with Datacon, a member of uh, the international management team there. Uh, he, he himself brings a wealth of uh, you know, great experience to telco transformations, and he'll be sharing some of that uh, with us today. Uh, we also have Mike Smith from Concentra. Uh, Mike's a client director, and he's very much focused there on uh, working with uh, clients on a data-driven approach to organizational design, specifically in the telco sector, but he's also got wide experience in other change programs and sectors as well. So. Uh, be good to hear uh, some stories that Mike has there too. I'm also delighted to be joined by uh, Nathan Ott. Uh, Nathan is CEO and uh, Chief Polisher of the GC Index. And if you're not familiar with the uh, Chief Polisher term uh, now, I'm, I'm sure by the end of the hour uh, you'll be familiar with that. Uh, and the GC Index um, it, it itself is a fascinating tool. Um, it helps organisations think about the people in a very different way. Um, but one that aims to maximise, you know, the personal impact uh, and support of the strategy that's been rolled out in, in that particular organisation. So, uh, welcome everyone. It's great to have uh, those speakers here with us today, and it's also great to have the opportunity to share uh, an overview of what will be a new standard, um, kind of from Team Forum that we've created uh, as a result of our Catalyst project, uh, one of our Catalyst projects that we delivered uh, last year. Now, I'm very conscious that we've got uh, many members of Team Forum on the call, uh, and you're familiar with Team Forum, but uh, we will also be joined by non-members. Um, so Team Forum um, you know, has been around for around 30 years. We've got 90,000 plus member professionals, 850 member companies with a global presence, and uh, most of uh, the global telco companies are represented in the, the brands that you can see uh, down at the bottom uh, of, the, of the slide there. Uh, one thing I will say, I'm very, uh, I've been in the team forum for around three years now. We've got a very pragmatic uh, approach. Um, so whilst we um, do research and uh, uh, media as a, as a product, uh, we've got a very practical set of products in our catalyst projects, of which this is one, uh, and also in our collaboration projects. So uh, a lot of practical delivery people in the forum, and uh, it's from that background I am myself. So i um, very keen to, to have practical uh, tools and, uh, and assets that uh, we hopefully will help others to do their, their uh, operational jobs too. So if uh, you're not a member of TM Forum, then please uh, visit tmforum.org and you see some memberships there, uh, information there on the top left-hand side of our website. Uh, we'll share that in the follow-up email with you as well. Uh, if you're not a member, I'd obviously encourage you to join uh, TM Forum and uh, take advantage of the, uh, the networking opportunities as well as the practical uh, products that we uh, provide. So I mentioned digital maturity. It's one of the things that I'm personally responsible for. One of the three key areas that we help our members with uh, are navigating transformation. Uh, you've seen that little bubble there, a couple of products, model and benchmark and tracker. Uh, our tracker product is, is really a marketing-based um, survey where we, where we test and ask execs around the globe uh, their view of digital transformation and how they're progressing within their own organizations. Uh, and our model and benchmark is an online browser-based digital maturity assessment tool, um, which we carry out assessment from within the organizations uh, and understand where they are in their particular journey. There was been interesting is that uh, in terms of the outcomes from both of those um, uh, survey uh, sources, if you like, is that digital leadership, uh, customer experience, and culture, especially culture, come up as the uh, the kind of um, three priority areas that organisations are saying that they need help with. And the DMM itself, the digital maturity model itself, um, looks at 
kind of five different dimension areas, customer, strategy, technology, operations, and as I say, culture. So um, traditionally, TM Forum has primarily been uh, providing solutions in technology and operations space, but uh, obviously there's a clear role to play in digital leadership, customer experience, and culture too. And that's one of the reasons why we put this catalyst uh, together uh, last year to uh, test whether we could come up with uh, a solution that would help, uh, as I say, other members and customers uh, on that journey. So this model, I described as an online tool, available as an online tool as well. If you're a member, there's also access to uh, uh, other ha assets related to uh, related to DMM. So, um, you know, given the fact that we have uh, you know had this feedback from members, as I say, we want to put together a, a, you know a practical solution. You know, could we put something together that would give our members value? Um, could we do it as a live project? Um, it, it's fantastic to have demonstrators and prototypes, but actually doing it in a live customer scenario would be obviously engaging and, and would our uh, customer champion remain engaged as we went through that process. I mean, what kind of lessons would we learn from that uh, and what is the bottom line uh, business benefits that we would see? And at the end of the day, you know, could we develop a standard to help other members uh, in the subject uh, uh, of this call? So we came together in collaboration um, and, uh, you know, under the Catalyst, Catalyst uh, product. Um, so without any uh, kind of further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to uh, Bjorn uh, Menden from Deticon, and uh, Bjorn will describe uh, the methodology that's used within this new standard, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll then pass through into Mike and, and Nathan in, in due course. So Bjorn, over yeah. to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, can everybody see my screen? I, yeah, this should work. So yes, um, talking about uh, the, the catalyst as a starting point. I mean, um, every carrier basically is, is currently facing the challenges of, of needing to transform, needing to, to conduct a digital transformation. Um, with some of them, it's, it's still fixing the basics, uh, achieving a decent customer orientation, getting a grip on the cost base, uh, introduce uh, automation. Um, a very tough one, really changing the capabilities. Others are already looking at the digital portfolio, um, going beyond um, a fate of, of just being a bit pipe as a carrier. And uh, some are even address, uh, on, on, on the way to address the future. And obviously these, these questions were also key questions um, for, um, for um, 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 a carrier like Deutsche Telekom. Uh, so for Deutsche Telekom, the question on how to go into the market with a digital service offering, how to use um, a digital portfolio in order to be successful, um, that was one of, of, the, of the key issues for, uh, uh, for Deutsche Telekom. And in order to address this, this key issue, we, um, we basically said that um, we would like to you try out something a little bit new, I would say in the sense of um, helping um, Deutsche Telekom and its uh, B2B daughter T systems uh, to uh, go to embark on a journey for uh, digital transformation. We applied what we've called a digital transformation ecosystem. So um, that ecosystem consists mainly of a framework that I'll introduce to you um, and approach. That approach um, is, I would say, slightly different from from what uh, carriers are used from, um, I have to say, my profession being a consultant. So really an integrated approach um, using uh, not only PowerPoint and Excel in order to come up with a decent scenario for uh, the client's development, but really utilizing different layers, um, um, data-driven layers in, in order to enhance decision-making and in order to guide um, um, the carrier to, to guide the CSP um, through this journey. And also, we had a slightly different look on the roles, um, I'm acknowledging that um, you do need nowadays um, a couple of different roles to be involved, a couple of different players to be involved in order to make such a transformation happen. Talking about um, the, the catalyst as such, um, we were quite lucky in the sense of uh, getting mandated uh, to transform the digital division of the systems, which was basically the nucleus of um, the, um, the digital um, endeavors of uh, Deutsche Telekom Group 
um, from something that you could describe as a very fragmented collection of digital initiatives um, that didn't really follow one coherent business model. So uh, there was a phase one, that phase one was radical restructuring of the whole organization into a new target operating model that was really addressing on different layers um, um, what needs to be done in order to come up with, with a product driven um, scalability, um, of scalability on its mind, um, a kind of business model, um, operating model. Um, and then in a second phase, um, taking the insights of the first transformation and, um, and going really into um, sharpening our footprint, especially in the IoT area. And um, Robert mentioned, uh, Robert asked the question of whether we could do um, a catalyst basically on a, on a living uh, project. So this was not desk work. This was really a um, project that encompassed the whole div the digital division. Um, that was also basically from its operating model principles, the nucleus for um, um, the current structure of, of the whole of the systems, very product driven, um, very much um, aiming at uh, scalability of products and services. So this was a real life patient. You know, so if you would have done something wrong, uh, well, they, they might, might be dead now, um, which they aren't luckily. So uh, I guess this, this, this whole project was quite a success. Um, the results also, I think, were, were quite uh, amazing, like from really product innovation, coming up with a streamlined product service portfolio um, uh, that um, um, was unlike the solution-driven um, uh, culture um, 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 that we had in that area before. It was really scalable. Um, the um, efficient use of scarce resources, if you look into the market, basically, you're competing for people that um, basically are, are looked for from from, from all kinds of other industries. No? Daimler is looking for people who can, can do connected cars. You're competing with, with uh, OTT brands. And uh, so one of the key success factors is uh, the scarce resources, those resources where you have this competition, you need to use efficiently. Um, so in the end, I would say um, we achieved a much greater effectiveness um, simply through um, um, better teamwork, aligning the organization behind um, a common um, operating model. So this really, really made an impact. Um, this basically was the groundwork the, um, where we applied our digital transformation ecosystem um, at, at the client. That was the catalyst. Um, and uh, I mean, one catalyst could be, yeah, be just by chance that we've been successful, but um, uh, the concept, the whole data-driven approach, um, the whole digital transformation ecosystem has since uh, since uh, our work with um, T systems been applied with um, other carriers on different continents. Uh, we actually had two in South America, one in Asia, three in the Middle East, and another two in Europe. So that really points to the um, 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 the assumption that the approach is really something worth looking at and is really quite successful. Um, so the framework as such, um, I think there are two two very distinct features of this framework, um, other than three. Um, one is that it really heavily relies on the digital maturity assessment. Uh, so that is both the initial assessment of the health of the structure of the of the operating model um, of the CSP um, and really gives both um, um, gives very, very clear guidance on where to look at and uh, what, what topics are need to be addressed. That these results are then basically translated into three layers: strategy layer, an operating model layer, and a cultural layer. All these these three layers are basically backed by a data layer. Uh, so the key difference of what you see usually when you um, embark on, on such a model is tons of PowerPoints with lots of theory. Um, here we really may try to make a difference by applying um, data, um, applying digital tools in order to support decision making, to create transparency, to actually connect all those different data points to something that allows you to really understand um, how these things interact with each other. Um, saying um, these three layers, there is there's there's a fourth layer um, that um, also helped us a lot. You know, so we um, basically relied quite a bit 
on uh, some, some of the methods, tools, and trainings that TM Forum provides. Now, so the digital maturity model being the foremost one, but also ETOM was quite helpful in order to um, to uh, address uh, process and organizational topics. So this is this is the basic framework that we applied. Um, the second thing, which is I think um, um, important about this framework, is it's not a one-time thing. Uh, so basically, if you if you if if you look back at the slide when I when I uh, told you about the story that we um, um, went through with the uh, with the digital division, uh, there were two phases, and that's that's why we, what's that's why precisely what needs to be done if you really want to make this stick, if you really want to make this happen. Uh, it's not a one-time exercise, it's, it's, it's about iterations. That's where the agility really comes in. Um, having a digital maturity assessment, giving you the opportunity of looking really at what, what the key issues are, um, um, addressing those key issues, then going into another assessment, going into another digital maturity assessment, seeing, seeing what has changed in order to identify the, the next steps that's quite decisive for this thing to be successful. Because especially if you talk about digital transformation, if you talk about digital services for CSP, that's that's not nothing where you can do copy and paste because most carriers are pretty much in a stage where they are trying to figure out on what their path into, into a digital future will actually be. So that iteration and the capability and, and, and ability of, of going, going through these iterations and making constant adjustments in the in, you know, transformation strategy that's absolutely key to the whole concept um talking about the different phases um we, in in this this iteration basically from initialization um from the after um, um the the assessment that gives you a clear view on where the key issues lie and where you should actually uh, where the biggest levers are that you should address to the initiation initiation um then reali realizing um basically um, um are those the concepts um, provided um you could compare that to 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 sprint and in, in, in agile um make it sustainable no? so really look at what sticks and where you find resistance within the organization and um then um basically uh, allowing yourself to to learn from it and go into the next iteration uh, and especially that going into the next iteration port is is extremely important um, for this to be successful. I was talking uh, at the beginning about different roles that you kind of need to um, need to get into the picture. You know, so the business lead, uh, so to help the businesses adopt the business model to digital transformation. Uh, really talk, thinking about future business models, thinking about the customer coming from that perspective, making that perspective um, the key thought in all activities within the uh, transformation. You need to have a very, very good look at organization and culture. As Robert said in the very beginning, um, uh, culture is one of the key issues for such a transformation. I would say culture, capability, and and um, say the, 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 the organizational structure as such, um, are aspects that either um, help you win this race or really make you lose. Um, the data scientist is also something that I think most transformation approaches really don't have on their mind. Um, but if you want to use the power of tools, of, um, of data that you have within your organization, it's an absolutely essential role. Um, pretty much like the industry body that allows you to leverage knowledge beyond, um, let's say, the borders of your own organization. Um, I have to say, even before and especially after the catalyst, I'm, I became a true believer that uh, you need to act in those ecosystems. You need to act in, in partners. You need to actually get the best together for each dimension in such a transformation. So, um, Last but not least, um, giving a little bit of the proof. I know it's 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 hardly readable, but um, what you see on the left side actually that was the initial assessment with the digital maturity model of uh, the digital division of two systems. Uh, you see quite a bit of red in there, quite a bit of yellow. Um, the greens are quite underrepresented. Um, that was not that in the fragmentation phase. So after the first reorganization, that which took roughly eight months, nine months. Um, including all the negotiations with uh, the German uh, Workers' Council, 
um, which, which can be quite a tough one. Um, we ended up with a new target operating model and applied the digital maturity model again. And you see quite a bit of, of a change, no? especially on the strategy side and the culture and people and org side. The culture people and org side was a key enabler in the second phase then to um, focus on, um, let's say, the next step of the evolution of this organization, um, which was really um, customer driven. Um, with a focus on, um, on transforming our, um, the client into into a IoT uh, player that uh, really thinks customer acts with customer in its mind, um, and all this basically this data from the digital maturity model, um, the data from the organization. Um, how we dealt with this and how important this is. Um, Mike will. Uh, shed some light on this. Mike, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Bjorn. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Smith. I'm a client director at Concentra, the providers of the OrgView platform. And uh, my background is in telecommunications data and also business change. And a pleasure to be uh, in, uh, covering this this afternoon. Um, just to sort of in, sort of set the scene for, um, for this section, um, in 2016, Forbes.com published an article titled "Why 84% of Companies Fail at Digital Transformation." At the end of 2018, the drum backed that up with a figure of 85%. And the Forbes article, which was research-based, went on to say that a large part of that 84% is because the companies that are transforming are not prepared to change how people work and interact. Um, to enable the high performance. They think they can have strategy and technology, but the proof of the pudding is that that just doesn't get them to where they want to be uh, in, a, in a good enough way or, or fast enough. And this is also borne out by TM Forum research among CTIOs um, saying that, you know, organization and culture is a key issue and hence why we're having the discussion today. Um, in in 2018, Gartner stated that 80% of CEOs are now driving digital transformation and they're turning to their HR leaders to actually help deliver that change. And as Bjorn just mentioned, in our experience, it's the collaboration between the technology function transforming the uh, uh, technology, um, the HR function, the org transformation team who actually change the workforce and work, working with the business owners that brings about the most successful change. The digital transformation ecosystem addresses this head on um, with a practical approach and really by addressing organization culture, which we're just about to come on to alongside the technology uh, maximizes uh, the return on, on, on overall investment. And actually, I think fundamentally what the DT does, it brings the technologists closer to the business people and the HR folks closer to the data and technology to make it all work. So Bjorn introduced the, the DTE framework um, and just sort of recap where we are on that. So data underpins each part of this. Um, the, the DMM in terms of the as is analysis and the desired to be definition. Uh, the strategy layer, um, which many organizations do very well, what you'd expect in analyzing the business, developing business cases. And this is something I think um, most people are pretty familiar with. Um, the next bit then is shaping the new operating model there, and that's the bit that I'm going to focus on. And then I'll hand over to, to Nathan to talk about the uh, cultural layer. But we find that transformations benefit significantly from being more data driven and, and using the data that organizations already have. So digital transformation is about technology enabling changes in the way the work is done in existing value chains and introducing new work in new value chains to produce greater value for customers, operators, partners, and suppliers. Alongside the technology, our approach focuses on getting the right people doing the right work with the right skills to align to the business strategy and therefore to maximize the benefits achievable from the technology. The organization is more than just uh, boxes and wires on an org chart. It's about how the people are structured, what work is done, what skills and impacts are, are, are utilized. And all these things are critical to the digital transformation outcome. 
Uh, this multi-dimensional change we find needs to be uh, data-driven because it is uh, quite complex otherwise, and technology enabled to visualize, model, and transform efficiently and uh, successfully. Otherwise, it can just be too hard and opportunities are missed and emissions are made. In summary, in the digital transformation basically systematizes and digitalizes organ culture change. And most operating model initiatives have some dependence on data. Our approach uses more of your existing data about people, work and skills. Um, the OrgView platform enabled us to visualize and analyze the structure, so that top left, to model the processes, um, bottom left, to, to understand uh, and redefine the roles and responsibilities, top right, and to understand required changes in skills and personal impacts, so we could plan and address the gaps. And I'll, I'll come back to, to each of these. HR directors tell us that they have poor people data quality. We find that's the case actually in many organizations, but also it's actually easily addressed if done in, in the right way. And OrgView has, just to in, in, introduce that before we come on to look at that a bit more, has supported 600 transformations by telcos, other enterprises and leading consultancies globally. And we routinely see organization analysis and design delivered in half the time with half the team size uh, using this approach and multidimensional visualization, identifying opportunities that otherwise would not be seen. In, in the operating model transformation, we need to understand the current organization and from the understanding guided by strategic principles, we can design the target organization. The trouble is there's a lot of detail in the organization that gets overlooked, is difficult to see and therefore to act on. Uh, using this approach, which, which, which this platform is designed for, we can easily see the org structure, spans, layers, headcount, people costs, and, and so on. And the icicle chart you can see on, on the screen now shows the fragmentation in the, the as was IoT business, um, which explains why innovation, customer centricity, and, and agility were, were, were not as uh, was required. Other visualizations reveal uh, uh, other aspects that uh, um, I won't go, go into today, but this is sort of just the start of the as is analysis. The team then created a dedicated IoT function in charge of its own destiny, consolidating IoT into a single function for greater focus and agility, as you can see the, uh, the, the uh, dark blue shown here. Enabling new approach to product portfolio management, we'll come on to the process side, and also enabling proximity to the customer through alignment with the wider Deutsche Telekom account teams. The as-is process activity analysis revealed a number of issues. Um, they were missing early stages in product lifecycle management, resulting in a high proportion of tailored solutions, too much bespoke work, and not enough standardization. The customers were being managed independently across different pro uh, product portfolios, and which is not ideal, clearly, from a, a business development a relationship management point of view. Now, when you're starting up a business, that's okay initially to get going, but clearly the, the approach needed to uh, change and adapt to realize the, the future strategy. The to be process design refocused work to enable greater scaling of the business. The new product lifecycle process, partly shown here, addressed the gaps and clarified the process end to end. This chart shows the reduction in the activities focused on product technical development, that's the minus five at the top, um, driven by the uh, high level of bespoke projects, and, uh, and but also then was offset by the increase in the earlier life cycle ideation and feasibility. A wider analysis of the as-is processes showed multiple roles involved in the same activities. Overlapping responsibilities result in a lack of agility and inefficiency and also drives organizational inertia. The organization needed to standardize the IoT products and a more joined up approach with, with customers was required to be able to scale, to be cost effective and to be competitive. Based on the new processes, we redefined the roles and clarified responsibilities, removing duplication. This created efficiency with less people involved in any one activity. It helped effectiveness with each person being more focused, removing the treacle that clogs, that, 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 that clogs up the ways of working. By refining roles with more manageable number of responsibilities enabled greater focus. And by simplifying responsibilities, individuals were more empowered 
and organizational agility increased. Going forward, actually, there's more opportunity to identify how much time people spend on activities, to cost those activities, to rebalance and further refine the way that the organization works. To enable growth, we assess the current skills versus capabilities and volumes needed for the new and also for the changing roles and use that to create a talent plan. We highlighted the suitability of existing candidates and identified where T systems needed to develop people, to transfer in from other parts of the business, or indeed to recruit from outside. Transition takes time, and visualization we can see here helps with tracking to ensure that the right people are aligned to roles at the right time. Since delivering the T systems project, we can now visualize the uh, uh, digital maturity model in OrgView, as we can see here on the left. And actually, we can use TM Forum's uh, ETOM business process framework as a basis for modeling uh, to, uh, to, to be processes. This approach accelerates the benefits. The results were higher for better insight and for more compelling financial evaluation. Success comes from the combination of the, the right approach and the ability to exploit data in a meaningful way, to shape the operating model and culture, and to make the most of the technology investment. Each situation is different, each will require a different emphasis, and of course the key thing is, is to choose the right combination that's right for you and, and your program. So now I'd like to hand over to uh, Nathan Ott um, to talk about the uh, cultural aspects. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, so hello, everybody. I'm Nathan Ott, the chief polisher here at the, the GC Index. <clears throat> We've been working with the, the TM Forum for over four years on this this notion of, of culture. It's um, we know it's one of the, the biggest things. Um, and challenges that uh, CSPs are facing. Um, we know it's crucial through the uh, to, to all CSPs to cope with new competition, new products, and the relatively new cadence of change. Um, consumers are adapting far faster than than the telcos. Um, the question really poised to us by TM Forum is why why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to address this this issue of culture? And if we if we go back to what organizational culture has historically been defined as by management theorists, it's, it's been defined as a, a collection of beliefs, values, attitudes, and behaviors, and communication styles to which people work with in an organization. It's pretty nebulous stuff. Yeah, it's quite difficult then to actually pinpoint you know, how this culture is going to serve the business, how it's going to serve a transformation. So again, working, working very hard, um, is really to to understand if a culture is useful for the future um we we need a practical language and framework um for for intervention of, of, of making decisions you know so if we if we keep it quite simple um because research have asked us you know what kind of organizational culture supports the achievement of business goals whatever they are in this case digital transformation um, but can we break that down any further and, to sort of, and start answering some simple questions? You know, is it possible to focus on critical moments within a transformation? How, how do key decisions get made in our organization through a transformation? So if we just use this very simple slide, um, if we're talking about how we make people decisions, so how do we get people to be in the right place at the right time impacting <clears throat> our transformation we, we look at the available data we have already so we already have a lot of expertise and skills and competence we we, we use that as a as, as a data point we then look at experience and track record have they done it before yeah that we use that as a proof point for making decisions and we have this data available to us um, already you will have this data available to you already um, and then we look at the more typically softer side of things around personality and, and behaviors. You may have used things such as psychometrics like an MBTI or a Belbin or a DISC profile. All very useful and we've seen um, with the, the use of view how we can pull all that data in together and, and start making some decisions. But 
what becomes quite apparent is the bit that's missing is we look at all these, these this data we've got, but it doesn't really tell us how people are going to make an impact. How they're going to impact our business, the business decisions, the business direction, our transformation at the right time. We we almost sort of cross our fingers and, and, and hope for the best. So the the, the sort of key questions we, we, we really want to get is you know how can how will this person drive change? You know how will this group drive innovation? We need can our leadership um, support successful transformation? How can we help? And and so how are all these individuals and in our organisation going to individually? And collectively contribute and impact our, our transformation. So, if we look at the the next the next slide, we as I said, we've worked at here at the GC Index um, again with, with TM Forum for for over four years. This is not something we've just dreamt up from a management theory. This is based on on real real life experience um, working with well, over two hundred organisations over the last couple of years, helping them drive. Um, real um, change um, within their aligning their people to, to, to real change. So if we look at the, the top left, that just shows the, the the GC index model, and we 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 get a bit caught up um, in, in 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 transformation. Where oh, we've all got to change. Everyone has to change. You you need to go and be innovative, or you need to change. You need to be creative, whatever it may be. Um, that's not particularly helpful language okay so so in in the model um you will see there are five key proclivities for impact um uh, if we look at the top right um there is a, the role that, that we call the game changer these individuals um drive original ideas ideas and w live in a world of possibilities um and and they bring new ways to do they can see new ways of doing things the challenge is, is that integrating those new ideas are always are always a challenge because we have business as usual. We have certain frameworks we have to work to all the all the all the things that you guys will be used to. And an original idea is no good unless we can make sense of it. So the role there's the individuals there and within our transformation that we would call the the the, the, the strategist, and that is to help. Um, make sense of these these ideas. Why do we need to do this? What are we doing this for? Will this get us where we need to get to? Now, again, above the line, the stresses and the game changes are very ideas focused. They want to make an impact through through ideas, through radical or or, 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 or clear, sensible, pragmatic ideas. But an idea doesn't mean anything um, unless we get on and do something with it. We have to deliver. And there's a big core of, of, um, of a proclivity, an impact proclivity around implementation getting things done, achieving things. Um, and then an idea is only good if we can make it better and better and better and deliver it and continues to, to drive it and, and improve upon it. So we have that role of the polisher. And in the middle, there's, there's, a, there's a genuine role around collaboration, which we call the playmaker, genuinely around linking all these component parts. So that's a very simple model. Um, if you look at the next slide on the right, um, next, next section top right, what you see, this is a real, how we start to leverage the data um, at a team level. So the team rolls up um, and these are real teams in a real organization doing real transformation. And as you will see, each of these teams collectively want to make an impact in a different way. Okay, All of these teams are successful. But understanding how, for example, the innovation team on the bottom left that wants to continually drive radical transformation and, and new ideas has to converse with the ops team that needs to make for the dev team who want to make an impact in, in very different ways and so the notion is is that they can have a, a genuine conversation they can have a pragmatic conversation about making decisions at the right place at the right time and it then it, it enables a much smoother um, transformation what's so great about leveraging um, the data tool that, that um, in, in org view and looking at that data, if we overlay that data, we can start cutting that data very extensively and, and really helping people make those decisions. So a couple of outputs from, from, from org view. What is significant is in the bottom right is if you look at the charts that, that Mike placed um, um, at the beginning that didn't have this proclivity impact data overlaid to it, it was just blue. We couldn't actually see the shift and the energy 
um, within the organization, actually how um, the diversity of impact is being leveraged. So on the bottom, bottom right, you've got the before organization on the left, so it's very red, very pragmatic, very implementation focused. We've got to get it done. Business as usual, we've always done it this way. New ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of change, very, very difficult to, 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 to implement. As you'll see 12 months later, through the reorg and, and through overlaying the impact data, a much more blended and diverse, um, diverse uh, organization when it comes to making an impact. So we are getting a much more diverse impact through this transformation and therefore more likely for a transformation to succeed. Robert, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Nathan. So we found uh, <clears throat> we found from uh, Nathan and Mike and Bjorn around the methodology and the uh, the data centric approach and the people centric approach. Um, you know, we've we've seen in, in in real terms, not just in for this particular project we took out in T systems, but across the piece in terms of our tracker and our DMM assessments that we've done to date. You know, organization and culture is coming out as is pretty much the top. Um, as I say, digital leadership and customer experience are still areas that uh, concern our members and our customers, but um, culture is is is, is uh, always shown as our top or top issue area. So to that end, with this pragmatic Kenny kind of tool set and standard, um, you know we've got this assessment informed kind of data driven people-based um, methodology. We're not saying it'll give you 100% of the answers, but it's a great place to start. Um, what we'd love you to do is to, um, you know, download the uh, the actual standard document itself, um, and you know, please do uh, get in touch with us uh, if you want to discuss this further, or, or even call me as at Nice. Um, you will have a link to uh, both this uh, this document and uh, the the presentation deck uh, uh, and an email following the call. Um, I would say that um, you know, let's look at this from a black and white bottom line point of view. Um, on this particular T Systems project, on the move from the old organisation to the new and, and utilise the new operating model and the new organisational design, uh, there's a 50% resource efficiency saving. Now, uh, clearly, other transformational projects will have either revenue impacting uh, KPIs or cost reduction KPIs uh, or customer experience KPIs. Now, that's for the transformation team and the business. Uh, along with the strategy to define and to bank those as they go through the, you know, that journey. Um, but it, the, you know, it's not only a saving in the bottom line business results for the actual, um, you know, business case, if you like, of the of the operations and the products and services that uh, emanate from the, the final program. The speed of the transformation itself, uh, you heard Mike talk about half the people and half the time. Uh, we're in this constant uh, state of flux, of course, and change and, and um, adapting to the market. Uh, if you have something systematically um, you know, embedded within your organization about how that organization functions and processes and the people that you have in it, the richer that is and the more systematic that is, the quicker you're able to morph it moving forward. So uh, we heard about your multiple phases. Uh, change, as we know, doesn't stop tomorrow once the transformation phase has been delivered. The next phase comes upon us and we've got to react to that and having the things to hand systematically to allow us to model things quicker uh, has got to be a key benefit. Um, lots of grey here, I can certainly attest to that. Uh, and the, the kind of third area, this, this, this uh, uh, people-based impact, uh, clearly uh, we want to make sure that uh, or, or engender the sense of people being happy in their job and, and happier people are more effective and more efficient. Um, yes, they've got skills and qualifications, but uh, uh, they've got natural proclivities, natural things and ways of being that they are during their day that lend themselves to certain role types. And, uh, you know, if we've got a better sense of that, well, we're probably better able to uh, place those people uh, in the organisation. Um, we we'll mentioned Nice, and uh, if you are attending uh, our, our flagship event in Nice, do do come along and and uh, find us as whole week of networking. I think it's probably the major benefit of being a TM Forum uh, member. Uh, there's a massive agenda over three days. Uh, you know, 5G, AI, APIs, blockchain, etc. Uh, it's not about technology. 
we've also got ethics and governance and program management, all that kind of stuff to, to, to cover as well. But everything that joins up to uh, being more effective at, at digital transformation. Uh, you'll see the full agenda on, on the main website, Team Forum. Uh, .org. Um, as I say, I think uh, the network opportunities there uh, and the quality of the delegates uh, really for me is the, the, the biggest thing. Quality of delegates and the networking opportunities, uh, the amount of work that gets done there is, is, is fantastic. So um, I guess just before we move on to uh, Q&A, um, I, I would like to just highlight the fact that uh, the speakers today, uh, there are some books available on, on the subject dig, uh, digital transformation, uh, specifically on, on uh, reference architecture, future telco, and uh, this data-driven approach that we spoke of during uh, this webinar and, and on our people-centric um, uh, uh, your initiative as part of the Catalyst, uh, the GC Index uh, uh, book that's uh, available as well. So, um, as I say, you get this deck immediately uh, uh, following the call. So, just like to um, kind of hand it out for uh, uh, Q and A, and um, let's see what questions uh, we uh, we take on the on the webinar here. I'll just give that a, a minute or two for. Uh, uh, people to ask. Uh, we've actually got one here. So, um, um, so Mike mentioned uh, other transformation projects where OrgView has been used to great effect uh, outside of the telco industry. Can you describe uh, the benefits for those other customers, uh, Mike? Certainly. So um, there was a global bank going through a digital transformation. They had to restructure um, from a, a geographical model to a functional model and they were able to do the design for about 50,000 people with a team of about 12 in eight weeks. And that was phenomenal. It was a fairly hairy eight weeks, it's fair to say, but uh, that's much quicker than the normal. And actually through using this type of approach, they were able to find an additional $27 million worth of savings, uh, which wasn't expected. So that's just kind of you know one, one example. Um, there's a, a, a telco currently um, using this to design in lots of different areas. And by taking the data-driven approach in a single platform, they can actually roll up all the changes and get a, a view across the, the whole of change very quickly. And uh, um, so, yeah, there's a, a number of different or, or organizations uh, using this. And uh, I think it's best summed up by uh, a, a, a service provider that said that we're no longer stuck in Excel hell. <laughs> Very good. That classic approach to organizational design called Excel and PowerPoint. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Mohammed, could I ask you to uh, read any further questions out, please? Yep, absolutely. Uh, we have lots of questions here today. Um, okay, the first one here is, um, are you going to share the slides later, please? Uh, of course, as Robert said, uh, we will send the webinar recording, um, the guide uh, document, as well as the slides from the webinar uh, after this session. Um, the next question here is, so from the slide with the new organization, are you suggesting an IoT organization hierarchy for the IoT line of business? Uh, who would want to take that? That's probably best for Bjorn, I think. Okay. Um, well, that's actually a good question. I mean, that's the, the answer would be really very specific to, to, to the situation. In this case, um, you, you're basically looking at, at, at a CSP that has quite a bit of tra to tradition um, in, uh, let's say, classic system integration business. And so for the systems, it absolutely makes sense, especially if you look at, at, uh, at certain uh, areas where they were active in, like connected car. I don't know if you, if you drive a Merck, for example, um, here in Germany. 
Um, and and there's so only countries you have some Deutsche Telekom stuff in there, so some some IoT um, um, from from this IoT unit. So yes, in in, in that scenario, um, talking about a, a, a large telecommunication group that has already gone beyond uh, being a provider of pure connectivity, this makes sense. So with some of the other clients that um, that I've, I've briefly uh, show, briefly showed on. One of the slides, and 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 for example, in uh, in uh, the Middle East, uh, we ended up with one client um, um, not going for let's say an IoT unit in the sense of an hierarchical structure uh, within the business, but um, well, we had a very cost-driven core business in 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 in, 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 in connectivity, very very basic um, uh, offerings. Um, and the digitalization there started basically with um, um, a unit um, uh, that was um, aiming at the really digital business in the sense of building that in parallel or the source of serving a little bit like a pilot um, to do all the things um, to, uh, that, that were needed in order to come up with a portfolio that goes beyond connectivity um, without harming actually the, the uh, uh, running business uh, that was, um, let's say, back, back to, to, to producing a bit. No. So I know it's a typical consultant answer. It depends. Um, in the case of, of Deutsche Telekom as a group, it made sense. In the sense of the other client, uh, an IoT unit wouldn't have made sense because they were just based in connectivity. They got a digital um, 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 business center um, to to basically come up with with new products, more connectivity based. So in their case, um, IoT wouldn't have made any sense. Great, thank you, Bjorn. Um, the next question here is: What level of autonomy was given to the teams or uh, the new roles? Um, you, you mean within the transformation project? Um, I, I would say um, level of autonomy um, um, within the new organization. That very much differed depending on which team you were looking at. Now, so I think one of one of the key challenges that most most clients are currently facing is, I mean, there's a lot of talk about agile that everything needs to be agile. Funny enough, it doesn't. Now, so um, there are parts where agility really, really is important. Now, so when it comes when it comes to solution consultants, for example, in the in the in the IT or in the in the digital division organization, those who are organized. Um, um, in a sense of a pool organization. Right? So with an enormous amount of agility, they're moving flexibly between different projects and tasks throughout the whole organization. Um, while in other areas where it was really mere production of, of, of repeatable, scalable um, products and services, um, the emphasis was, was very much on efficiency. And so I think I think one of one of the key success factors for digitalizing a carrier is to really look where you need flexibility, agility within your organization, clever use of resources, and where you really really go need to go down a straightforward automation standardization uh, and efficiency driven approach. And connecting these two, I think that's the high art of of, of, of orchestrating such a transformation. Great, thank you. Um, the next question here is, uh, is there any DMM template for financial organizations such as banks, payment service providers, etc.? Yeah, I'll take that one more. Okay. So we get asked this question uh, a lot in terms of, uh, you know, how, how applicable is our digital maturity model to other uh, vertical sectors? And I would say that um, you know, it, it, it's very generic in that in that respect. I think in a previous version one model we had uh, 180 criteria. Uh, I think there was one question there that was specific to 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 telcos. So clearly we're trying to come at this from a uh, you know digitising the business. Uh, we're not specifically going into um, you know the detail of, of of the telco implementation. It's more about the maturity levels one would expect to see in any business in any sector uh, across the five key dimension areas that we uh, that we spoke about in the slide earlier. So, you know, customer strategy, technology, operations, and and, and culture. Uh, so yeah, we we're in conversation with, uh, for example, UK manufacturing um, and you know automotive uh, industries and so on. So. You know, it's not just applicable to telco. That's uh, Team Forum's 
key focus area, but uh, we're being asked to if we if, if it can be used to, to implement elsewhere. Right, and I yeah. think that yeah. also. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, if I might add something to to what Robert said, um, um, which I so far even didn't tell Robert. So sorry for that, Robert. Um, I mean, we, we've actually been we've been actually been trying out uh, the, um, 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 uh, the digital maturity model, um, a little bit adapted version of it, also with other industries, and I have to say it works quite well. Um, we've been um, um, applying it in, in some customers in the manufacturing industry, obviously with few changes. But um, um, even though Robert said it's, it's generic, it really hits the point when it comes to digitalization. You need to tweak it a little bit, maybe to get that industry specifics in. Um, but uh, for us, as, as a consulting company, um, 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 it, it works. It works quite well, also for other industries. So I could only urge the TM forum to broaden the scope if I, if I might be so bold. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Prime. We'll look to do that next release. Um, okay. Any furthers? Uh, Mohammed? Yeah, uh, I think that those responses also answer the next question, which is quite related, which says, is there a DMM questionnaire for financial organizations? I, th I think that's covered. Um, so the next question is, based on your experience, what is the best way to approach this dis digital transformation to the organization? Or first, you need to understand the company culture in order to... Hi, Mohammed. Sounds like you've cut out a little... Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Robert, you there? Yeah, you're cutting. Yeah, you're cutting in and out a little bit, Mohammed. Oh, sorry. Um, is that any better? That's better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is based on your experience. What is the best way to approach this digital transformation for the organisation? Or first, do you need to understand the company culture in order to build the approach and strategy? Uh, let's take, let's take, if Nathan can take that initially and then we'll come back to Bjorn on that one. Yep, hi, so, so where we have seen the most success is, um, is definitely getting the, the understanding, the, 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 the the transformational readiness of the leadership um, first. Um, so definitely the leadership drives the culture. So as one of the, the earlier questions, you know, how is this leadership going to successfully drive and influence change? And then what we what tends to happen is is that it then cascades down to um, understand this proclivity data and, and, and this, this data cascades down to the next layer of leadership and then through the whole organization. So that's tend to be starting to make some decisions about what we need to do, how we're going to do that, and um, how do we formulate the, the best organizational structure, teams, et cetera, in a way that's going to um, become most successful. But I will hand over to Bjorn because the, 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 the culture data, the proclivity data is, is just a, is a, is a point at that assessment phase, which you will see in the, um, in, in the DT book that, that TM Forum are going to release later. Yeah, I would, say, I would say one 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 very good starting point. I mean, there there is obviously a sense of urgency um, um, in the telecommunication industry, but also in every other industry when it comes to digitalization, either from a customer perspective in the sense of digitizing product products, um, the fear of being disrupted, or simply the the need of increasing cost efficiency. So that sense of urgency is obviously the the, the starting point for for any any of these transformations. What I found quite helpful. Is um, um, is again the, the digital maturity model. Now, so quite a few clients, if you look at the telecom, uh, the the, uh, the telecommunication industry, are they aware of the TM forum? They think it's a, they have heard of the tool, and they are willing to have a look at themselves using um, um, the digital maturity model. So what we've been doing basically for the last two years, um, uh, when we are engaging with transformation discussion on a client approach us approaches us on, uh, with a question on how to tackle um, uh, digitization, um, we, we come up with an assessment. We could really combine that with a leadership workshop um, because you have to go get the, the discussion going. Uh, the digital maturity model providing the basis of the leadership workshop, basically providing the view and creating the common ground to move forward. Um, 
and a, and, a, and a very initial discussion on how to structure such a transformation. This this is currently the the approach we we are basically doing all over the place. Um, as you might have seen in the presentation, the digital maturity model gives you a, a clear hint on where to look at and what the key issues within the organization are. Um, so so um, then it's basically only in bracket and only um, um, setting up the right program to address these topics and um, having these having the awareness having the transparency that the maturity model creates um, that simply helps to 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 move on and to to get rid of all the discussions on oh what do we need to do we don't know so let's move left or right or wherever so so that's that's usually the starting point for us all right, lovely. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. I'll squeeze in one final question. Um, is there any data to show how integrated transformational change is within law enforcement liaison teams in telcos, as these departments tend to be siloed from the main business? And yet, from international perspective, these departments need to be at the forefront of this development due to the nature of their work. Um, Robert? Bjorn, would you have a, a response for that one? Yeah, well, if, if we tackle, and funny enough, this is happening, especially at the moment, quite often, a uh, full carrier, we also deal with functions like lawful interception and so on and so forth. Um, um it really depends a little bit on 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 the carrier in some in some cases um you end up especially if you look for example at at uh, um if i would look at deutsche telecom group you would end up with um even having a specific team um with uh, certain security clearance and so on and so forth um, um, being able to work on this area um but um we directly answer your questions um Yes, there is data, but I can't show you. <laughs> I don't know if that helps, but that would be the truthful answer, because especially that area is quite conf confidential. There are also a couple of areas blacked out of what we've shown you today. Um, so, but um, in, in in this case, um, yeah, yes, there are is, but uh, unfortunately, not available in the sense of sharing. Okay, no worries. Absolutely understandable. Well, uh, great. I think uh, we will uh, stop the Q and A now. And um, Robert, any final words? Yeah, I think just to say that uh, obviously we'd encourage you to uh, you know, download and, and, and read that that document and, and do please uh, get in touch with us if uh, you have any further comments or questions or indeed want to join the collaboration project to to move it forward. This is our uh, first release of, of, of the document. Uh, we are trying to crack this this area in a practical way, and uh, you know any help uh, w w uh, for the help we can we can take on board to to make it even more practical and useful for uh, members and customers. Then uh, clearly we'd be uh, we'd love to to have your help to do that. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining the call. We'll, we'll close it there and let you get back to your your, your day job. Thank you.